there's a certain amount of pride that goes with a cello that's sounding good. What does it take to play the cello well? For me, it's about developing muscle strength, coordinating brain, nerves, muscles, bones, and just really being able to work physically and, and strengthening oneself. Along with that, developing one's ears. There's more there. There's a little more uh, pasture or meadowland. My name is Joshua Kestenbaum. I'm a cellist in the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. I started with a cello when I was nine years old in the San Jose Public Schools, and I, I love music, so I went to Stanford and studied uh, music theory, went to the Yale School of Music. My last year at Yale, I learned there was an opening in the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. I auditioned, I played in front of Pinky Superman, and I went right to the Chamber Orchestra in 1980, and I've been here since. The main challenge of the cello is that it does take a lot of pounds to get the sound out. Good. Do you see all that strength you have? Just try it one more time. Try to stand up. Okay. So that's all the power you have. If you're a kid and you're playing cello, it takes some mass or fat or muscle or combination thereof before you can really lean into an instrument and make a racket. How are you going to get power at the tip? Um, what do you yeah, actually do? Like lifting up your arm a little bit? Lifting up your arm, right. It's important to develop good mechanical discipline at the cello early because uh, habits get formed early. We want to sort of pay attention to what we do from here to here. And if we do that, it's going to be a lot easier to play the cello effectively. And it's also going to be beautiful to watch. And when it's beautiful to watch, almost always it's beautiful to hear. There's an aesthetic component also. Uh, to me, there's something very beautiful about a, a machine that's functioning really well. So this exercise is for the lower back, for the hips, pelvis, all the muscles down here that are really essential to playing cello. I had made a decision that I wanted to get in as good shape as, uh, as possible and I got myself a trainer. I went in and said, I'm a special case scenario, I'm a delicate blossom, and I want a trainer who understands that I must not be strained in the process of developing muscles. I got the housekeeper from the Brady Bunch. This is great because it makes cello playing a lot easier. Not only are my arms bigger physically, there's, there's more mass there, um, but it, it just makes it into a, a toy cello, basically. I've been doing this for nine years and I feel that the cello feels more and more miniature. It takes less work to get the job accomplished. Tight, 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 frozen, feeling better. That's good, it's good for me. It's good exercise. What I don't like about playing cello, what I can hate about it sometimes, is finding that I'm doing what I perceive to be all the right mechanical, physical, musical gestures, and finding that those gestures are thwarted by an old string, an out-of-adjustment cello. I found that really good instruments can get out of adjustment very quickly. Hi, Jenny. How you doing, Josh? Doing all right. You? Oh, good. Nice to see, see you. you. My cello adjuster for the last 30 years has been Jennifer Becker. She comes from a long line, at least two or three generations, of very important instrument makers and restorers and adjusters. Cello is slightly misbehaving. Ah, okay. It's not bad, but... What else? How's the bridge height? Um, it's a little high right now. I've known Josh Kestenbaum at least 30 years. He was my second customer. Interesting sound. <laughs> I'm a rock star. When I have the luxury of, of going out there, I'd say maybe once or twice a month, if there's a problem that seems to be um, not easily fixed, I might go there two or three times a week. And my colleagues, I think, make fun of me a little bit as the guy who has to have his cello adjusted all the time. So I think it's, it's stiff. pretty good, yeah, a little stiff. Keeping an instrument in adjustment is very important, especially if the person's very sensitive. It's critical 
to some people to keep their instrument exactly in tune all the time. I have a lot of customers that are very picky in particular, and I am too, so it's a good fit. It's a little punchy. It's punchy. I think it's going to be time to, to change the bridge. Okay. This town has the biggest swing in weather, so you need two bridges, two sets up, set ups for winter, for summer. You know, it's uh, buttery. There's a, there's a... It's difficult to put into words how an instrument sounds, how it feels. Josh comes up with very colorful ways of putting things. It got a little thin, a little skim yeah. milky. A little bit like playground with metal swings and equipment. It's just, it's not fortress-y yet. Yep. And I like a sort of instant on grab, yeah. like a Mercedes door shutting. 100% of the times that I've come out to see her with a complaint, she has not only understood the complaint, but she has said, oh yes, here's what we need to do, and she's been able to fix it. So my tonal concerns feel quite validated. This really is the great. best we've had with this bridge. This is great. <laughs> if you think about it, when we listen to uh, radio or watch TV, we have all of the controls right in front of us. But with a cello, we have to have someone take primitive Fred Flintstone style tools and go ka chunk, ka chunk in order to get a certain result. That's just the state of the art right now in 2010. Oh, good to see you. Great oh. to see you. Yeah. The thing about paying attention to mechanics and ergonomics is that it allows this amazing life-changing music to flow through us. When everything is just right, what I feel is the most marvelous thing, which is clarity. It's as if the storm clouds have vanished. And when things are really great, I have the sense that the cello is being played, but there's no one doing the playing. It's just that playing is happening, and it's wonderful. Thank you.